Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs and for this review, I am very happy to be showing you the new battle outfit or whatever it's called version of M. Bison from Storm Collectibles for Street Fighter V Arcade Edition. And I wanna make something clear for those of you who are not familiar with Street Fighter. In Japan, his name is Vega. They changed it to M. Bison because they had to shift around the boxer's name. So I had somebody ask me the other day, is it a bootleg? I, I see one on eBay that says Vega instead of M. Bison. No, it's not. I mean, it, I guess it could be technically, but no, some of them will say Vega. If you get one from overseas, it will say Vega. If you get some, one from in the US, it'll say M. Bison. So hopefully that clears that up for anybody who isn't aware, but this is the new version of him in his very cool outfit. And this figure, I mean, objectively, there's a lot of good stuff to like about it. But there is something about this figure, which I'll go over as we as we talk about it, which makes me like Storm Collectibles more than I did. I mean, I already liked them, but this shows that they actually are listening and paying attention and doing what they can to make their figures better. So make sure you stick around because it, 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 that's an important thing. A lot of companies don't do that a lot these days. And so I, I definitely want to at least touch on that a little bit. So let's go ahead and get this guy off the stand and take a closer look. This guy stands about seven and three quarter inches tall to the top of his hat, which is where you would measure because his hat is connected to his head, I guess, which makes him about 20 centimeters. You can extrapolate that, how accurate his scaling is. It's probably not. Their whole line is a little bit big. I'm not gonna harp on that because we already know it going into it. Uh, compared to the existing M. Bison, in case you're curious, he's maybe a little bit bigger. Now I do have my classic one posed just a little bit, but he does seem a little bit a little bit bigger which is probably just happenstance it's not necessarily that they were trying to do that but who cares it's not enough to make a difference I'm trying to set this down without dropping it there we go this guy looks really good now that's a good thing for them because it is just basically a solid black figure i mean for the most part so they didn't have to do a whole lot and hopefully it doesn't look bad on video because i don't know how lighting is going to deal with this solid black but you know, it, it is literally solid black. It doesn't appear to have any shading on it, but I don't really mind because we do have these pops of color, especially with the gold armor on the wrists and the shoulders. Those have shading on them. They look great. They're sculpted nicely. That skull looks good. It could have easily turned wonky trying to fit a skull on a shoulder. Very nicely done. We have the silver up here. We have the silver zipper here and along the lapel. That's done nicely. The red is clean. The face is painted really well. The hat and all the details, really no issues there. All in all, for a relatively basic character design, at least in terms of uh, color, I guess, it's done really well. There is red on the inside of his cape or jacket or whatever you want to call that, so that's well done. And then we do have more shading on the gold for the boots. So that's all nice. Aesthetically speaking, it is exactly what it's supposed to be. Sure, I guess they could have, you know, forced in some shading on the black, though that would have either required blue or gray or something and probably would have taken away from the overall look. 9 out of 10, I guess. Maybe they could have done a little bit with the black, but that's that's about it. I mean, everything else is done the way it should have been done. Oh, speaking of which, this is kind of an articulation point, but it's also an aesthetic thing. So this isn't an actual chain. It's molded soft uh, plastic. So it could get wonky depending on how they have it connected. Luckily, it swivels at either end. So you don't have to worry about that. You can just swivel them down and it'll hang in the right in the right position, more or less. So that's a good thing. Um, I guess they could have done real chain also, but this is reasonably acceptable, so that's fine. Let's go ahead and talk about the accessories. This guy has three different faces. We have the neutral face that comes on him in the package. We have one where his teeth are showing and he's smiling, and then we have one where his mouth is open like he's probably laughing. And they all look really good. They've all, they nailed Bison last time, they apparently nailed his face this time again too, so apparently they just always get Bison done pretty well. As far as hands go, we have the two fist hands that come on him in the package, and then we have, I said package funny, and then we have an array of open hands, which are essentially just a bunch of different open hands. Then, and this is one of the things I want to actually talk about, so we're going to cut back to the actual video rather than photos. We have this lower part of his jacket, which is very similar to the first release. He had one kind of normal jacket, and then he had one which was windswept. Well, the windswept one looks awesome, first of all. It's very dynamic for just being like a skirt piece, so that's cool. It's nice that we get that, but here's the thing that makes me so very pleased with this. There's this, and then there's at least one other thing that I want to talk about later, hopefully I don't forget, that makes me very, very happy 
about Storm and the way they're doing things. The other one required you to separate the figure. You had to pop off the lower ball peg, and it was not only terrifying because nobody wants to risk breaking a figure like that. Even if it's made well and meant to do it, you still have a chance of breaking that ball peg. But you also have a high chance of it getting loose over time, just because that's what happens with friction joints. They didn't do that this time. They actually thought about it, or maybe they just didn't have a chance to do it the first time, whatever. They improved upon what they did the first time, which did have inherent issues. This time, you just pop the belt off, the front part of the belt, and the cape comes off that way. You don't have to worry about breaking anything. It's perfectly safe to do this unless you're really ham-handed and you just smash the pegs on this thing or like fold it in half or something, the front piece, because it's relatively stiff plastic. That's so much better, so much more considerate for the customer. Cost them a little bit more to do, but it's better for the figure, better for the consumer, and that makes me very happy. A lot of companies would just be like, no, pull on the ball peg, hope it doesn't break. They did this, and that makes me very, very happy. I did not know this. In fact, when I first got it, I was like, uh-oh, I gotta pull on it. So I started pulling on it, I'm like, it doesn't wanna go. Makes me very nervous, and I looked at it closer, and I'm like, hey, there's a thing. And then I pulled out the instruction sheet, and it's like, yeah, moron, pull the belt off. But anyway, that makes me very happy. So we do get that accessory. And then back to the accessories, we get his purple fireball, which is done really nice and it has a peg hole in it for his fireball display stand. Gone are the days of having the big Street Fighter display stands. I'm personally okay with it because I didn't really like them that much in the first place and they took away from the budget of the actual figure. So accessory wise on this guy, I think we have a decent amount of stuff. Uh, I'm gonna go 8 out of 10. Maybe we could have had like, uh, I don't know, I didn't get to play the game since it was PlayStation and PC exclusive. Maybe like another swoosh effect or something, but we got interchangeable heads, clothes, fireball, and hands. I'm gonna bump it up to 9 out of 10. I like the accessories. That's very good. Okay, time for the articulation. The head is still on a ball peg, which moves down in the torso, so it's technically a double ball peg, and up at the head, so you can move him around very nicely. You shouldn't have any trouble posing him. They also seem to have at least started to move away from the issue of having uh, no neck. These guys, this guy seems to have a little bit of a longer neck, which is good. It helps for posing and just overall aesthetics. So the head poses very well on a double ball peg. These guys are connected only at the very top and they're very flexible. The shoulder is connected on a ball peg inside the torso, once again. This piece just kind of floats around. This piece is flexible, so you can move the arms around pretty well. You don't have the best range out of that ball peg in there, but I would much rather the aesthetic be good here than have like a big cutout like we saw on, who was it, Zangief maybe? So I, I'm okay with this personally, but the, it works well. The hinge works well. You can raise the arm up better than horizontal. That's awesome. You get full rotation. Of course, the shoulder pad does get in the way at some point, so... It would have been better to have this connected to the arm, typically speaking, but since there's a chain that connects it across, you can't do that. So this is as good as you're gonna get. I'm okay with that. You do get a, a, a bicep swivel, though you have to raise the arm a little bit to use it because this cap does get in the way. Or I guess you could just force it, but that's fine. Double jointed elbow, just about 90 degrees. Definitely could be a little bit better there, but he's fairly bulky, so I'll let it slide. We do have a little bit of gappage going on here, which is sometimes acceptable and I guess because he's bulky I guess I'll let it slide again here. This is a soft floating piece. The wrist is on a ball peg in the forearm and then a ball hinge at the end which works nicely. Hands are a soft material so they interchange easily. That's all good. We have a uh, torso or a diaphragm joint which is just a ball peg but it works really well. You get really good range and that's that's awesome. I, my hands were in the way for most of that because he's kind of big and hard to handle delicately, but you get really nice range out of that. They painted and sculpted all the way up. You get rotation and pretty much everything you want. Then I'll pop this off. You have another ball peg down here, which gives him even more range, which is really good. Rotation, floating crotch piece. I know he looks goofy without the skirt. He's not meant to be looked at without the skirt, but that's that's accurate to the character design, so that's okay. The legs do go out to the side very far. They corrected the issue they had with Evil Ryu and Violent Ken, where the hips were bumping into the torso. We don't have that anymore, and we have really baggy hips and really good range. Very pleased with that. They're definitely improving as they go, without a doubt, and that makes me so happy. We have a thigh swivel, that's fine. Bringing the leg forward, pretty good. Obviously he is bulky, so you're gonna have some limitation, but that should be enough to get imposed. I think that's all right. Going backward, you can go back a little bit too. You hear squeaking, there is some squeaking, but it's not especially stiff. That's another thing I wanted to mention. The joints on this guy are significantly more fluid. 
a lot more like the original Ryu figure where everything felt real creamy and smooth. And then some of the later ones got really, really sticky as you were posing them, it seemed. This guy doesn't have any of that, so I like that a whole bunch. Double jointed knee, let's see how this works. I haven't really tried to use it too much. It is about 90 degrees. I think for as baggy as he is, that's reasonable. So that's fine, I'll give it to him. I mean, they would have had to really hollow out a lot back here for it to work better, so I'll give it to them. And then for the ankles, we do have a little bit of a better ankle than we've seen in some of the recent releases. It does go back pretty far. Uh, now, it's only limited going forward by the part on the foot, which is a little bit of a bummer, but the hinge itself is a lot more usable than some of the other releases, so I like that. We do have a, uh, a swivel in there to bring the foot for an ankle rocker, it's not the most useful, but it is there. And then we do have a toe hinge, which is probably useless. I don't really like toe hinges in general, and this one is not a great example, because it's not the best looking. Uh, you generally want to have the hinge the same thickness as the foot to make it look good. And it's not likely to be that useful because he's a big figure and it's a loose joint. But all in all, guys, the articulation on this guy is really solid, especially for how bulky he is. It's definitely within the acceptable range. So I'm gonna give him, let's say, eight out of 10 for articulation. That that seems fair. Let me get his belt back on. And that's how easy it is to swap the belt. Man, that makes me happy. All right, so yeah, it's a really, really solid release, guys. Not only is it a really cool character design, but Storm did a really good job of recreating it accurately, faithfully, and then making it as articulated and functional as possible. So I'm very pleased with this. I'm very pleased with Storm as a company based on this release. A lot of times you see companies kind of stagnate once they get a, get a following going. These guys seem to be improving as much as they can with every release, so I'm very, very pleased with that. And so I'm gonna give this guy an overall rating of eight out of 10. It is just exceptionally well done. Not perfect, there's still room for improvement, but as mass-produced things go, this is about what you can hope to expect for a really good figure from a solid company. So, I definitely recommend it, guys. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. That really helps me out a whole bunch, and I'd really appreciate it. And if you didn't like the video, well, I've got thousands of other reviews for you to check out on the channel. New videos up almost every single day, plenty to come back for, so make sure you subscribe. And in the meantime, keep collecting.